Hi everybody, oh man, oh man, January 4, 2019, jobs up big, plus 312,000 jobs created just in the month of December, record number working, manufacturing best in 20 years, Hispanic unemployment lowest ever, Dow plus 747. Oh my God. Wow. You know, if this is where you're getting your information from, if you're getting it from mainstream media, um, well, then I understand why you think Mr. Trump here is the best president we've ever, ever had. And I get comments like that. Yeah, Trump. He has been the best president we've ever had. Wow. Okay, well... Maybe that comes from too much watching of reality TV show. Now, this guy, he is an A1 narcissist. He's great. He's always great. He even declares that publicly. I am great. And look at this. Look at what Drudge does for Mr. Trump. Oh, marvelous. But, you know what? There's an awful lot of information that disputes this claim. And unfortunately, we do have a lot in the awake crowd who love to just confirm their biased thinking about Trump. They won't let in any information that disproves their belief. And that causes an awful lot of problems. All right. How, how is it that we can have uh, this miraculous turnaround? Please use logic, okay? Just common sense. Our economy, before he took office, just it, it was nothing like we have ever... It, it tanked, okay? Uh, and he comes into office, and no, uh-uh, no, it's not in two years, not in one year, but in six months, this guy miraculously turned everything around, and Americans were working again. Um, it doesn't happen like that, but, you know, look, guys, the psychopaths, the narcissists, the lesser of two evil. We've, this is what we put up with. Liars, liars, big, 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 big liars. And we continue to do the same old, same old. And yeah, we expect different results, but a lot of people just stick those results in their head and they think that they have just manifested. How do you have a fabulous economy, record number working, manufacturing best in 20 years, and you have these headlines, labor market alert, construction industry layoff surge, most on record. December 2018 layoff total of four, um, 43,884 was nearly 29% higher than last year and the highest total since 2015. Additionally, in 2018, 538,659 job cuts were announced, 28.6% higher than the 418,770 announced in 2017. This is the highest annual total since 598,510 cuts were recorded in 2015 and the second highest total since 2011. Younger Americans are having an increasingly hard time finding jobs. And their parents are getting the jobs. Um, only old workers found jobs in December. Old workers. What kind of work do you think old workers are getting? Those fabulous jobs 
that allow them to maintain their middle class lifestyle? Please. Uh, more and more people are coming out of retirement because they have to work. Look around at the stores where you shop. How many old people are still working? That means our economy is not doing well. The stock market crash of 2018 is rapidly transforming into the financial crisis of 2019. Stock markets are crashing all over the world. Extremely violent flash crashes. Crash of 2018 wiped out approximately $12 trillion. This is the kind of chaos that we only see during a financial crisis, meaning the extremely violent flash crash crashes and extreme volatility. Uh, China just experienced its first factory activity contraction in two years. A long-term Chinese slowdown would cause global havoc. Um, and yeah, uh, Walmart wouldn't be able to stock its shelves. U.S. financial markets are hypersensitive to any piece of bad news. What does that mean? Why did I highlight that? Only an economy, a stock market, so vulnerable and fragile could operate the way it's been operating. Down, up, down, up, and oh, you know, Trump says um, by uh, Oh, God, I can't remember the, the stock he was telling Americans to buy. We have a president who's actually you know, pushing people to buy, get, you know, participate in the stock market. Um, but it's hypersensitive because, well, number one, it's artificial. It's manipulated all the time. And it's... Uh, <laughs> well, a lot of people have been claiming the stock market crisis has already begun. You're in it now, but you get news like this and everything is just hunky-dory, right? No, it's not. It really is not. We're in bad straits. Italy's 10th largest bank just imploded. More financial dominoes start to topple as the losses mount. It's now been three months, and this new crisis shows no signs of abating anytime soon. What that means is that we are in a heap of trouble, because once this giant financial avalanche fully gets going, it's impossible to stop. Um, here, 11 rage-inducing facts about America's widely out-of-control student loan debt bubble. How could we have a fabulous economy when we have a debt <clears throat> that Trump has increased, but more and more Americans, well, as you'll see, are filing for bankruptcy and uh, the debt is just out of control individually and collectively with our federal government, but higher education has become one of the big, biggest money-making scams in America. Everything's a scam in America. Everything is a scam. Just, we're, we're scammed left and right. And we continue to get screwed left and right. And we don't do much about it. Okay, we tell all of our young people that if they want to have a bright future, they must go to college. This message is pounded into their head for 18 years. By the time they are ready to graduate uh, high school, um, yeah, they're unthink. How do you think about anything else? Go to college. Go to college. But the jobs are not there when they are graduating college. And you can't tell me that these administrators, the professors, the career counselors, college presidents, that they don't know that. They do know that. But who cares? Who cares? They're taking home massively bloated salaries as they steep more and more young into debt servitude. 
if our economy was fabulous, then we would see young people coming out of college and getting jobs. Instead, their parents are getting jobs and they go home and live with their parents. Dow falls 660 points on Apple bombshell. U.S. factory slowdown. Whoa. All right, well, I'll bring you to a video where Trump is talking about how manufacturing... Oh, wait a second. Didn't we just see that on Drudge? Manufacturing best in 20 years. 20 years. Okay, so... Why do we um, see a U.S. factory slowdown? U.S. manufacturing slowing amid trade war with China. Bank of America declares apocalypse, apocalypse Dow. 2018 was a bad year for stocks and most other assets. Uh, a record 93% of assets posted a negative total return in the past year. Treasury Secretary Munchen, Mnuchin, an evil shithead, raises questions about bank stability. Hold on to your hat. What? Our banks aren't stable? Oh, so that Italy, those banks imploding. And then Mike, Michael Schneider, in that article, he says, um, watch the big financial institutions in our country. Nothing is stable. Our economy, artificially propped up. And that can only hold for so long. But now, we are truly living the house of cards. And once those cards start toppling, there won't be any, any way to stop it. Middle class destroyed. 50% of all American workers make less than 30,533 a year. That's just a tad above Poverty. I think poverty is, it's 29,000 something. 50%. The economy is doing great and Americans are back to work with three, four, five jobs to pay their bills. U.S. housing market to get uglier in the near future. Sales decline to steepen and no respite in sight. Bankrupt America, bankruptcy soars as the country grapples with an unprecedented debt problem. The Opportunity Index, rating opportunity in metropolitan American, America. Wow. How well do local job markets allow people to earn a good life in America? Not all that well. Nationwide, just 38% of jobs pay enough to afford a middle or upper class life for a dual dual income earning family with children. 32% of jobs pay a living wage. 30% pay what we call a hardship wage, which is less than what a single adult living on is on his or her own needs for basic necessities. In the four pivotal background states, uh, 2016, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Florida. The latter three struggled to provide enough opportunity to earn a good life for its residents. The Midwest, in particular, had mixed opportunity scores with some areas clearing, clearly making a comeback from de-industrialization and others left behind. Um, high living costs, particularly expensive housing, severely restricted opportunity to earn a middle-class life in some of the largest coastal metro metros that are commonly considered like San Francisco, New York City, LA. Um, and the results starkly depict how much opportunity has bypassed people of color in American metros. Wow. 
so minorities are hurting. But but what what he's been talking about African Americans and Hispanics, lowest unemployment ever. Everybody's doing beautifully. How long are you going to continue listening to narcissistic liars? How long? As more and more Americans suffer, is it just that you want this information so that you feel okay? So that you don't have to ever do a thing. You can go about your business thinking, oh, Americans are doing well now. You know, oh God. And yeah, I am referring, and one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because the comments keep coming in. Trump is the best, best. Americans are back at work. Carol, don't you see anything? 62% of all U.S. jobs do not pay enough to support a middle-class life. Uh, this means that the American dream is truly out of reach for most of the country at this point. Today, Americans are working harder than ever, but the cost of living continues to rise. America had the strongest and most vibrant middle class in the history of the world, but now this latest study has discovered that it's only 38%. That can, 38% uh, that are middle class. The middle class continues to be destroyed. And that 38% is going to be lower. How can the economy be doing fabulously? And this guy, he, you know, every month we get these reports. Every month we get these reports. Um, and it is true. Most Americans really love to live the lie. But, you know, just do a search, economic collapse, on YouTube. Uh, if you don't prepare for economic collapse, well, here's what you have to do. Economic collapse news. Jim Rogers warns, prepare now. Um, and this was five hours ago. Uh, Gerald Calente, dangerous warning, 2019, economic collapse. Countries are going down. Urgent warning. If you're not prepared for the economic collapse, well, too bad for you. Uh, economic collapse, martial law, famine. Uh, Bill Halter, day of the collapse is coming. Economic collapse, American confirmed. Um, and it goes on and on. And these are within the last week the last week and you're getting your news from a pathological liar named Trump and you think everything's hunky-dory. Gee, Edward Griffin, prepare now. And yeah, just go, well, this William Mount, Jesus, I can't believe that he still has subscribers. He just announced Aaron of, uh, oh, Jesus. Wow, all right, memory uh, fading. I know that a lot of you are experiencing it. But Aaron, who announces um, <laughs> the heartbreak of all of the holistic doctors dying, this guy said Aaron died. Aaron died, and he doesn't even take down the video. Unbelievable. So, um, you know, you can believe you're liars or, you know, you might want to do some research and check it out for yourself because our economy is really just hanging on by a thread. Our debt continues to mount. And then you listen to this guy. Oh, my God. This is a uh, highlights from Greta Van Susteren's interview with President Trump. Oh, please, let's listen to just a few minutes, okay? 
Mexico has signed a new trade agreement updating NAFTA. That's right. Now, um, one of the parts of it has to do with auto workers, auto parts. Is that in any way going to specifically address one of the issues the United States has with GM closing, pl closing plants and 14,000 losing jobs? Well, it is, and it's not only that. It's going to keep auto companies from moving. One of the things I really wanted is plants and auto companies and just general, I mean, jobs, factories. I don't okay, so he's saying that this new NAFTA deal is going to keep uh, industry from moving from this country? Please check it out. Everything needs to be checked out. But if you listen to this video, it's almost... Th th this guy, you know, look, we've been dumbed down, unfortunately, to a point where you can listen to this guy who says nothing, empty, he just speaks words, and... Well, I guess people just believe the words. But if you listen to this, you'll realize he's not saying anything. He's just filling space with words. I'm leaving the United States. That was very important to me. And we're not leaving the United States. So I think one of the strongest elements of the new, it's, you know, the, I call it the, the USMCA. Uh, one of the really important things is you won't see companies leaving once that gets signed. We have to get it through Congress. And if it gets through, uh, which I think it will, that'll be great. And if it doesn't, we're very happy the way it is now. As you call out China as one of the countries, say, is ripping off the United States, China's global footprint is expanding. They're all over North Africa. They're building a huge port in Pakistan. Uh, they have great deals, investment deals in Panama and Latin America, sort of coming very close to the United States geographically. Um, do you trust the strategic goals of China? Are you a little bit worried? Well, I think they're going to have less money than they have right now because the deal that I'm making, if you look at, uh, we have $250 billion right now at 25%. That means we're going to be taking in billions and billions of dollars, plus I can double that up and then I can double it again. And uh, they can never do what they did in the past with other presidents because, and you see what's happening. I mean, China is, I don't want to do this, but they are not doing very well now compared to what they were doing. And uh, again, I think that we are doing well. We picked up $11.7 trillion in worth since my election, and China's lost a great deal of worth. And we are now a much bigger economy than China, which a lot of people don't know. We're a much bigger... And yeah, listen to Trump. A lot of people don't know. But listen to Trump, you know, uh, um, and listen to him when he's talking about how our, our economy is the strongest in the world. Um, and, oh, listen to this. Really, really a much, much more powerful, powerful economy, economy than China. China. But as a national security point, you know, with their investment in Latin America and all over the world, it does seem that they are they're making a bigger footprint around the world. Yeah, but they have a debt problem and they have to pay for that debt. It's a tremendous... They have a debt problem. They have a debt problem and they have to pay for their debt. Well, let's see about that debt problem. U.S. debt to China. How much is it? Reasons why? What if China sells? The U.S. debt to China is 1.138 trillion as of October 2018. We're fragile. We're vulnerable all over the place. They have a debt problem. Um... Look, you know, if you just listen to this, the, the remaining five minutes, he talks about how our air is clean and our water is clean. This guy just says whatever the hell he wants to say. And Americans buy it, they believe it, and they think he's great those who support him. Um, we have a big problem. It, we have a big problem, and it's not that we have these people who lie to us all the time. When you have a headline like this on Drudge, well, you really have to wonder about Drudge, um, which, you know, I just go to because I want to see what mainstream media is up to. But when you have people supporting liars, 
trumping up, trumping up um, their lies, supporting their lies. You got an awful lot of people who allow these people to do their thinking for them. That is the problem. And how do you get people to think for themselves? Hell if I know. Great, now we're having a thunderstorm. Um, hell if I know. But this country is so twisted and really profoundly sick. You know, <laughs> more and more does that saying of Gandhi's comes to mind pretty much every day. The well-adjusted to a deeply disturbed society. And these lies are just getting so outrageous and you hear one line, you do a 30 second search and you can find information that contradicts that lie and with every issue though, that's why everybody is just, you know, this country has gone berserk, berserk with its psychopathy and narcissism and greed and selfishness and me, me, me and people like this in the White House. What the hell, man? You know, I was thinking today about that public airing of the most immature fight that this guy had with Rosie O'Donnell and he's giving interviews and he's he's like he's he's like in eighth grade talking about how Rosie O'Donnell you know no talent really fat you know all of these and this guy's a public figure and now he's sitting in the White House you know that really it reflects, it reflects the moral degradation of the entire country. It reflects the, the now moral crisis that we have been suffering for a long time. But here he is, you know, manufacturing, jobs are back, and Again, drudge, yeah, manufacturing, and you know, you get the articles, manufacturing slowing down, GM will close five North American plants next year, um, a kick in the stomach, massive GM layoffs, leave workers distraught and angry, layoffs, Sears is folding, um, we're in big, big, big trouble. This I saw a headline, the BMW plant is here in South Carolina and I saw, you know, several headlines in the last month about BMW, how bad it's doing. So I don't get it. I really don't get it. I don't get it. It's like, wow. I just wish that we could carve off, a, you know, a little section of this country or find an island somewhere that is uninhibited uh, or un in ha has no habitation um, where we can all just go because I'm I'm like it, you, you're covered with this disgusting slime that we now are you know it's like this country is a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. I don't know what to say anymore. But it'd be funny if we didn't have increasing numbers of Americans who are suffering the consequences of this joke. All links are below.